Hey, this is Natalie Kalbeck, and I'm here with Ray Missickman, who is part of Creative Jumpstart 2020. And she has been part of Creative Jumpstart, I don't even know for how many years, but a lot many now. I know years. <laughs> so I'm super, super stoked. I love Ray so much. I love her art. I love her um, personality. She is a very, very sweet person and funny. And I met her only, I think, once or twice uh, yeah. at some shows. But I, I, one day we will have that play date where we will That's be together. Right. We, now you have room for me to come over. I will have room <laughs> for you if you come. So, Ray, for those people who are so sad that they don't know you yet, but they are in for a treat, can you um, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you are, and um, what you do? Okay. Um, well, I live in Florida. Um, I've been here most of my life. I came from Wisconsin when I was little and I've traveled around a little bit with a job. I used to be a flight attendant for years long before I did this. So I've lived a little bit, um, in a lot of different places, but Florida is my home now where, um, I'm surrounded by a really big, crazy, chaotic family. <laughs> It, it's getting bigger and smaller at the same time, if that makes sense. So my last one of five started college this summer, but I have four grandchildren too, little granddaughters that live in the area. So one leaves and another one comes. So the door is kind of one of those revolving doors, <laughs> but I love it. And it's a whole different season of chaos now. You know, I kind of get to pick and choose what's going on and it's not all you know, car lines and everything like that. So it's a lot of fun. I get to do all the fun stuff now, like painting the pumpkins and sending them home with it and all of that. Dirty as they are, full of paint. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not my kid to bathe anymore. See ya. <laughs> no, we're having so much fun with that. So, it's, so you're, it's, you're, um, you said you were a flight attendant. Did you do art when you were, um, when you worked in your job already? Or how did that come to play? I did, but... Back then, most of my art was behind the scenes. Like it was, it was a hot, you know, I yeah. hate to say a hobby anymore. You know what I mean? Now it kind of becomes a job of sorts. It was much more of a hobby then. And, and I really hadn't been introduced to the concept of mixed media. So that came much later. You know, I was a big writer. Hmm. Um, I've always written. I've always kept a, a journal, you know, a journal that had words in it, not pictures. So when I was introduced to an art journal that had words and my mind exploded, you know, it was like a whole new world for me. Oh, that's pretty cool. So, um, when you, so you just mentioned that it, now it's not a hobby anymore. And I have been very, I've been grappling with that kind of, not pro, it's a nice problem to have, yeah. but do you feel that art is still also a hobby for you or did you pick up a different hobby? It's funny <laughs> because I've had to rein myself in because I'm one of those person that kind of like is a squirrel, you know, I want to try everything. I don't always try it where everyone knows I'm behind the scenes trying it, but I feel like that's part of like what you said, feeling that loss of mm -hmm. what used to be, you know, what you did to calm down or unwind. And I still do use art for that or painting mm -hmm. rather for that. But because I use it more as a business now too, I find behind the scenes, I do a lot of weaving, mm -hmm. crocheting and beading and um, I make rope bowls. You know, I do a lot of other things. I love tactiles yeah. and and, and things like that behind the scenes that are my go-to hobbies now more because if you paint every day sometimes it doesn't feel like the same kind of release when you need something different you know yeah that's so interesting I, I, uh, I'm so glad that someone else feels that way because I was like I'm weird and so I picked up uh, <laughs> I just started learning ukulele and that oh. became my my hobby since July so I take lessons <laughs> and I you know, every morning I practice for like half an hour and then in the evening I pick it up again. Um, but yeah, I have the same uh, feeling that I do love making art also in my free time, but it still becomes kind of part of, oh, I should show that or exactly. incorporate our that. immediately goes to how we can use that in right. our either career or our sharing or our classes. And so... Even if that particular painting started out as a hobby, it doesn't always end that way. And so I feel like having something else in the background has really helped me to do that. Plus, a lot of times you're doing something with one of those things 
and it's a catalyst for an idea and then you drop it and you're back at exactly the, yes. and, you know you're feeling refreshed and rejuvenated yep that's mm -hmm. ah, see yeah. <laughs> So I'm um, speaking of all those things like powers that draw yeah. you somewhere. So this year's Creative Jumpstart theme is Superpower. It's and my one of all time. I think that was genius. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your artistic superpower? And if your artistic superpower is different from your uh, normal life Mm -hmm. uh, superpower, let us know what's your normal life uh, superpower is too. I think they're pretty much the same. I mean, having always been going in a million directions with so many kids and everything, I feel like, and you know, for many years, a job too, and mm -hmm. everything else, I had to do everything quickly, or I had to schedule everything, you know, this 15 minutes goes here, this 15, you know, that's the only way my life could operate even remotely smoothly. And so when it came to art, and when I first started painting and art journaling, I was still in that season of my life. And so I was lucky if I got 15 minutes to do something. And so I learned to really take that time and use it well, you know? So I was, it's a joke. I still have the ancient videos on YouTube, the 15 minutes of mixed media, but I would literally set a timer because I knew if I went beyond that, everything else was going down the drain around here. <laughs> Cause you know how it is, you get on your stool and you don't get off. So I believe my superpower is working in small increments of time. I can do so much in 15 minutes now. It has become my go-to time frame. I've learned to walk away. It's refreshing to work in small mm -hmm. increments. You know, I feel rewarded because I can work small, like the pocket journals we talked about. And I don't know. I think because I had to always do that in my real life, it kind of converted into my art life and it, now I have all the time in the world, but I still walk away. I still find myself working in small pockets of time. That's pretty yeah. cool. And that's, yeah. that's mm -hmm. a great quality to have. And also I can, um, I can say, I saw your video already. It's amazing. And <laughs> you're, you're always the one who's like happy with that time, uh, allotment that we have, because it's like the theme of creative jumpstart is we want to give you like a short video that sparks right. your, creativity and and um, jump starts your creativity um, so that's the reason so that it's feasible we need it to be short every day and you're always happy I have other teachers that have a really really hard time to condense what they do um, into that short time it's it's really it interesting I began converting that style into my artwork it was it began as like a creative exercise, you know, mm -hmm. I would scribble or color or make marks or just get color down. I never felt very productive in that time. Mm -hmm. Took time to learn to be able to take that amount of time and actually do something from start to finish or feel very productive in it. But, but it's, it's been my saving grace in the studio because it allowed me to have mm -hmm. the life I wanted at home and not give that up in the life I wanted in the studio. Right. Too. And so when you, so now you said, you joked that you have yeah. now all the, the time in the world, which right, I yeah. know is not true, <laughs> but like, how do you, is that how you still approach then every, like your, let's say your household or your, are you also like kind of saying, I'm not going to clean for like, I don't know why I come to cleaning, but what I'm not going to clean the room for two hours. I'm going to do like, I have 20 minutes and this is what I'm doing for yeah. now. I have always been like that around the house. A, I'm a neat freak. My family hates that. You know, I have a little bit of OCD. They hate that. But, you know, they've learned to live with it. And it's it's how I've always operated, you know. I mean, I am hopping around all the time. I'm on high speed from the time I get up till the time I drop. But I, I get so much done. And now that I'm by myself here and my life has slowed down, I can't undo all that, you know. <laughs> so... <laughs> I wa I wander around going, gosh, it's so dang quiet. <laughs> you know, I'm the only person in the world who finally gets quiet free time, and I'm calling every kid I know. Don't you want to come over? Don't you want to bring a kid over? <laughs> but so I do that, you know, and I think a lot of that is the, you know, ADHD or whatever I have on top of everything else that, you know, I'll do two loads of laundry, and I'm like, okay, I'm done with that. Now what can I do? You know, I mean, it just... It's just how I operate, yeah. 
I like to do small increments too, but I think part of it is also because when I was a paralegal, you mm -hmm. had to be like on the run to always do something really because you had like, oh, I'm going to do this, but then there's an emergency, but you still have to do that other thing too. And so I'm also good in like small allotment. And then I also get so, I, f I feel like I get fed up less if I just like right. in my everyday life, like chores that you have to do if I don't do it too long like if right. I just do and everything a little YouTube, bit you know yeah. I, I, bored is not the word I want because I'm never bored doing art but I get in a rut that's the yeah so if I sit here for two hours I I overthink yeah. everything I overwork everything you know I just the small amounts of time keep me out of those bad habits right that's good that's so interesting. So um, speaking of new habits, it's not yeah. a bad habit that you had before, <laughs> but I know you that recently you got um, more into watercolors. Might be that you used it before, but we didn't like no, see it that much. But if so, you didn't. So how, how did that happen and how um, did you learn to work with that new media? Well, it kind of started as a hobby. I had a friend, my friend Sandy Keene does a lot of watercolor. And she, we were together one day, and she's like, you got to try this. I tried. I failed. I hated it. I whined. I cried. I hated it. It was horrible. You know, you can't work watercolor yeah. like you can work oil or acrylic. or. And the way I paint, watercolor didn't like that. Mm. That was the big thing. So she's like, you know, but just, just keep at it. Don't give up. Because I think if you could use watercolor – in your style, it could be really cool, you know? Yeah. So I just kept kind of behind the scenes messing around with it and playing. And as it turned out, I do like watercolor. I, I still fail at watercolor a lot because I don't use it in the traditional ways. But when I can get it to work for me in the ways I like, I love it. I mean, yeah. I, I am in love with the medium itself. So I think it's just with all the tools we have, you just have to learn what works for you. You know, I happen to like the student grade cheap paper because, yeah. you know, it works for what I want to do. And I think that takeaway from, you know, something you thought you hated is just kind of ignoring what everyone else is doing with it and just use it the way you want. And you might get the results you're looking for. That sounds so cool. And I also think that is kind of, um, I think that when I started out in mixed media so many years ago, you know, that was like exactly what I think everyone kind of was doing because we are all self-taught artists. Right. And then now there's so much information out because there are so many mixed media artists that you kind of lose that ability. But, um, right. Like we are like, Oh yeah, let's read up what, how can I use this stuff? And even as artists, we're always learning, you yes. know, we're so afraid to take away too much from a class because yeah. we have to stay unique and distinct and different. And um, I think that, like you said, we're in information overload. You know, I don't I don't let myself do pin, like look at Pinterest yeah. or or scroll too much or anything because we start to feel overwhelmed and we we're our own worst critics, you know, so. I just started doing what I wanted, ignoring the rules. Because I always thought watercolor was like a fine art, you know. Yeah, and I'm, yeah. I never, I'm never going to be that. I'm not interested in being that, you know. So once I just started messing around like it was a hobby, I enjoyed it a lot more. It's so much fun to. Um, I took this watercolor class last year, and um, uh, with John Duval, who's also a teacher at Creative Jumpstart um, this year too. And he is, oh my God, he's just so insane. And he uses the watercolor in such an expressive way. And then he makes these like gorgeous, you know, uh, urban landscapes. And he's he lives here in Jersey City too, or like right next mm -hmm. to it. And, but I had a, as you said, like such a hard time because it's just so different from acrylic paint. And once it's dried, I mean, it's like, it's dried. And trying to then go over and it's fix different. things that is just like, it does and not work. And the, the biggie was it's, I'm not patient. You know, yeah. with acrylic, if I'm not patient, I can mix my colors. I end up with some cool stuff. But with watercolor, mm. you know, you get a lot of brown if you're not patient. <laughs> 
that was a really big hurdle for me. <laughs> I thought I thought, felt that too, and also that, that then at some point the paper might react to it, and you're just like scrubbing the paper off and all right. kinds of stuff. But what I found funny is that he now experiments mm -hmm. with acrylic paints. So I don't know if I I don't think I was the trigger, but he asked me about acrylic paints, and now he. He starts doing that and, and adding it on top of acrylic paints and um, his watercolors. And I'm like, this yeah. is so fun. You know, it goes like both ways. And he yeah. told me that he has such a hard time in the beginning. I mean, now I'm looking at his acrylic like studies and I'm like, oh my God, dude, you're so talented, right? But, but he's like, he was like, oh, it's so hard with acrylic paint. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I love it now. And for me, it goes right back to the superpower. I have to do it quickly. I can't overthink it. I work small typically. And I, I just do it the way I want. And I end up with the results I enjoy. Whether they're right or wrong makes no difference. Exactly. Know? Well, the, if they are right for you, that's all that counts exactly. anyway. But I can tell it's right for everyone because it looks amazing. Love it. Yeah. You should check uh, Ray's uh, work out anyway, but also check out her... Uh, latest watercolor endeavors. I think you even have a watercolor class together yeah. with your friend yeah. right now. Will you talk? Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell something about it? Well, it's it's <laughs> funny because the class is based on all the hurdles that we encountered in hating the medium and getting to the point we are. And we really wanted to help people avoid all of those pitfalls so that they could enjoy the medium like we did pretty much out of the gate, you know, because I mean, if she really wouldn't have had a needle in my backside for a long time, I would not be doing watercolor today, <laughs> you know? And I mean, it's such a beautiful and magical medium mm -hmm. because so much happens with it that we really wanted to encourage people to kind of, you know, this is what we learned mm -hmm. along the way, you know, let us help you kind of get from A to B quicker and so you can just, you know, enjoy it. Right. That's yeah. so cool. So, um, Tell us real quick way where people find you on social media. What's your handle and your um, blog? Just my name, Ray Missigman, across the board. It's it's a tricky name, but, you know, once it's out there, it's out there. <laughs> There's not too many of them. <laughs> and the same for my website. It's raymissigman.com. Yep. We will link it up on the uh, interview, too. So... Um, I really love your pocket journals. You do a lot of like really, really small, super oh, cute they're pocket journals. They're so, they're awesome. so chunky and fat. I just love them. I so um, what are the benefits for you? And I think we kind of probably guess what it is since you told yeah. us your superpower in working so small. It is. I like <clears throat> that now that I'm to the point that I've learned how to master the time allotment, mm -hmm. I can actually create something in my pocket journal from start to finish. So mm -hmm. it's got the additional benefit of being rewarding because I see results quickly in it. I've always been a lover of, you know, textiles and different papers and that kind of thing. And, and the journal was born out of all of that, just a mismatch of all of that, you know, fabric and paper and mm -hmm. ribbons, everything. And Opening that up and working it, it just makes me happy, you know? I mean, I love the sound of the paper. I love all of the, mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, the ragged edges, all of it. But just opening that up and being able to create something from start to finish. And some days, you know, it might just be getting paint on a lot of the pages. And the next day I might run through, you know, assembly line style and do marks on them. And I mean, it's just, I don't know. There's something endearing about it. And you take that puppy out in public, it is a conversation. Piece. Oh, I bet. Kidding. It is a very... Ch I am staring at one right now, and I'm like, oh, yes, you're so cute. <laughs> so people come up to you, and they ask you what you're doing and what it is? Yeah. Um, the very first question I get, like, I take it with me to D.C. a lot because I'll go into yeah. meetings and I'll do... And people are like, what is that? That's what they ask. Not what are you doing or what do you paint? They're like, what is that? You know, I'm like... Because in their mind, a journal is going to be a sketchbook or, or a, it's just going to be bigger. You know, right. it's not going to fit in the palm of your hand like that. So plus mine end up being, you know, so thick that, <laughs> yeah, That's it, so cool. I love it. I love it. And I love that I can throw it in my bag. You know, if I have nothing, yeah. but dare I say it, a little tiny watercolor palette and a water brush, you know, I, I'm good to go, yeah. you know? Yeah, I think it, it, that's part of like making it easy on yourself when you're traveling or you're around if you really want to be 
uh, doing something creative, then you need to build that up for success and make it small and approachable, right? If right. you schlep and lunch. Doable for yourself, right. So you're going to be able to do it on the go. And I really wanted to do that. I mean, I'm sure there's times on vacation I don't make art, mm. but I want to. And if I have that, I can't. Like, I can just scratch that itch, even if it's just opening it to a yeah. page of color on it and making marks, you know? And sometimes that's all it is for me. It's just that little creative itch that I just, you know, I do that and I'm like, okay, I'm done. I'm fine. I mean, sometimes it's just holding that book. Right. Right. <laughs> no, <That's> you know, <laughs> Hi. <laughs> we don't see how petting it. <laughs> you should get like a little leash for it. No, that is so funny. That's what my husband said. He's like, you need a leash for that thing. I'm like, I love it that much. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> oh, push it around in the stroller. And I then can... people will ask you even more questions. Exactly. Like, <laughs> what hospital did you escape from? <laughs> you just mentioned that, but um, so everyone who knows you knows that too. But um, you're the master. Sorry, I'm falling off my chair. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm like, wait a minute. I think my floor is a little bit slanted. So. Okay. <laughs> um, after I mastered this, you're the master of mark making. Oh gosh! And you have like you have a book about marking, mark making. You did several like challenges and classes, and it's super fun. It's super awesome, and I think your artwork lives from these different marks that that yeah. you do. Do your marks symbolize anything to you? Certain um, marks? No, they they're more of an exercise for me. They they stem from something, and I touch on that story in my book a little bit. But now it's morphed into, I mean, the OCD, you know, I joke about it. It's not a joking matter. Mm -hmm. But um, for me, the counting is mm -hmm. very calming and it's repetitive. And mm -hmm. even on a good day, you know, someone like me, that helps. And mm -hmm. so getting those marks down, it, it's artistic. But in my mind, it's the counting. It's mm -hmm. the repetitive action that is a very calming influence in my life. And so... I think it started as a way to kind of rein myself in from that tragedy. And then now, subconsciously, I just go to it. It's my go-to exercise. Mm -hmm. It's like brushing your teeth or, you know, scratching an itch. I just can't not make art without doing it. And I know that's part of my ongoing self-care. You know, it just is something I do that makes me feel good, you know. That's so cool. Um, you just mentioned your book, which should be somewhere here in my bookshelf but <laughs> since it's a new bookshelf i have to see if i find it right away tell us the title um, um paint the explore right i can't see a, it's, making. it's in the yes. back there it's um it's expressive mark making techniques and mixed media and it's fun because I really do talk a lot about working small and, you know, like a lot of the art books do, there's a lot of walkthrough and a lot of step-by-step um, -step kind of things. But I also like to point out that you can work small all along mm -hmm. the way and build that into something bigger mm -hmm. and more amazing, like the clan collaborative that we did in the book that ended up being a huge piece. So yeah. that, that was a lot of fun, but that, that's something I touch on in the book, but I really like it that, just because I work small all the time doesn't mean I work big. I don't work medium. Anymore. Yeah. You know, well, I don't I don't find myself working like in the middle ground. It's either really big or really small. But a lot of times all those little loose pieces will end up on something really big. Interesting. That is mm -hmm. really interesting. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. Um I'm I'm now like um feeling that I get a little bit smaller in my yeah. art journal. I used to only do uh, letter size art journals and then I worked in the like in double spread so double right. letter right. press mm -hmm. size and I worked fairly small canvases but just because I couldn't do anything else right. um, besides like maybe one really big paintings that I did um, and now I have the wall easel and I'm like I want to go bigger and so I already it's not huge but I already started out on a bigger canvas than usual and I feel like I'm getting smaller in my art journal. I mean, not a lot, but I bought a um, an eight by eight, I think. Yeah. So that's a little bit smaller, and I'm really enjoying. I also enjoy the new, like the different format, uh, you know, that that provides for me. So it's interesting how that is also kind of giving you an opportunity to get out of your rut. Um, right. But 
yeah, we will see if I'm ending up like you having little pocketbooks you know, and big canvases. Exactly. <laughs> and the thing is, is even on the canvas, sometimes when I'm working big, even even if it doesn't start from small collage bits or something, I find myself working in pockets of that, yeah. canvas, you know, in small areas. Like, I think I used to believe that if you worked big, you had to work big all over all the time. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Not the case, you yeah. know, so I'll work on sections and then find a way to, you know, bring it all together another way. Right. Yeah. That, that's, um, I mean, that's a great way to work, especially when you work abstract too, of course. Right. Oh yes. yeah. But right. I can look, get, look, get lost in details also on a big painting. And then you're like, Oh, it's like, you know, maybe a big lens, like big right. buildings, but then I right. can get very tied up in a certain it tiny just, area. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I, you have to kind of like, hey, snap out of there, you know, like no one's going to see that. I love doing that. all the windows on the Empire State Building. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good luck with that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but we are, we're detail oriented anyway, you know, and so sometimes, especially as more abstract artists or mark makers, the details are what really, you know, bring us yeah. into focus. And so I think it's hard for us to pull away from that. I'm experimenting a little bit more with more white space on mm -hmm, my me too. and I'm liking it a lot mm -hmm, you know it used to be I could not walk away till every space was filled or colored and I'm really enjoying the look and feel of the I mean who who knows if it'll last and who cares I just I like the different elements of experimenting with this yeah things. I have the same feel um especially in my art journal that I now like leave vast areas of the page right. like just white or with a, one color, but not like cover up anything. I, it doesn't have to be white, of course. But um, and I was showing at a different for a different class that I was doing. I was showing some of my old art journals and then newer ones, and it was so interesting to me that that the new ones do have a very different. I still have in between pages that are loaded with paints, and you know, I love the the tactile feel of it they almost feel like leather because you have so much yes, pain, right? it's crazy you but, feel like right and i love mm -hmm. that but it was so interesting how different my new um um art journals look like and i think i was talking to um i think it was jody all i did an earlier interview with her like last month or whatever for uh creative jump jumpstart and she was saying that she also feels like she's uh, having like more space and maybe it's a different time in her life she said that you are just um, you know whatever goes on in your life and then you're also more busy in what you're putting out there and maybe when things are more calmed down you actually give I that. Like that too like maybe it is a subconscious reflection of my life kind of settling a little and entering a new season and just being a little quieter and a little more calm. And I mean, I wonder, art is funny that way. I wonder how much we really do project ourselves into that without right? knowing. Yeah. So, um, there, I thought it was very interesting too. So maybe that's, that's the point, or maybe it's just, we are, we need yeah. to do something else because we've always done that. Um, exactly. Right? Cause if I look back at my very first ones, it's marks. Like yes. it's, marks from here to there double spread mark 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 and now you know i'm not afraid to you know before i wouldn't add a flower or something mm -hmm. like that in there because i couldn't do it right or perfect mm -hmm. or you know accurate or realistic and now i'm in such a different place that i'm not afraid to throw that in there and show it to the world because it's like you said it's my right yeah, you know yeah. okay with that now and i was that you can definitely tell from my artwork in the past that that's not where I was. Yeah, I think it's important to, and I think that might might come also with, not only with the, the like how long you do art, but I think also I'm starting to be in a in a stage in my life where I feel like more uh, confident about mm -hmm. and more like uh, you know becoming the person that I actually was already. But I guess I didn't know. <laughs> but you know, you're like more like who cares? Like if someone is going to be mad at me for doing this or whatever. If you don't like it, go somewhere else or, yes, you know, we're comfortable in our own skin now and exactly. I think shows growth. And as an artist, that's so important, you know, because I, I would never, 
throw away my old art journals. I look through some of them and I cringe. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's, but I wouldn't throw them away. And I wouldn't hesitate to show them to someone if they ask, because that's progress. And yes. that's growth. And I don't mean getting better at the task or the technique. I mean getting more comfortable in my skin as an artist. Right. I think that's what it is. Yeah, about. exactly. Well, you also have to do a lot of like ugly stuff in order to find out, you know, learn things, but also to find out what you actually like because it's a personal uh, preference, what you like. Someone else might really like what and you And because think. we're self-taught, you know, yeah. we know where to begin or we didn't learn it in any order or you know that kind of thing so I definitely think as a self-taught artist in the beginning it's all kindergarten art you know yeah, yeah. just trying to figure out what we want to do you know exactly so that was so much fun as always Ray I love I love you and love talking <laughs> with you Hopefully sometime, maybe in 2020, we make it yeah. and we see each I'm, other. I'm like knocking on your door like, who is at my door? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I will let you in. There's no problem here. <laughs> I'll walk your cat for you. <laughs> oh, he's so scared. He probably would not let you do that. I but, do. But he will sniff at your pocketbook and probably find it very intriguing that there are little like ribbons and stuff. She will, he will love it yes <laughs> thank well, you so much thank you for having me again I really I'm very honored I Aww. love the project and I'm always so tickled when you reach out I'm super tickled that you're a part of it again so sign up for creative jumpstart I can tell you you're in for a treat um, for all the videos but race is as always super amazing um, maybe some of the things she was talking about her super artistic superpowers you know you might find them there and in there and um yeah use her link she will appreciate that and have a wonderful wonderful day happy creating yes <laughs> thank you ray bye bye